Uh, Google has been playing a relevant role in the travel industry for almost 20 years, becoming one of its uh, thought leaders. The acquisition of ITA in 2011 was a turning point, as since then we can really talk about Google Travel. I was lucky enough to leave it in, in first person as director of the travel boutique of Google in Spain and Portugal. Those vibrant days where Google took the decision to provide the traveler with the most useful information and in that process create tools for flights, accommodation and things to do, providers and intermediaries. Thus, it's very interesting to better understand what is now in 2023 Google Travel. And one excellent way to do it is to chat with Susie Bowinkle from Google. Hello, Susie. Thanks a lot for your time and disposition. Hello, it's nice to see you. First of all, before beginning with the question, I will appreciate if uh, uh, you can, you could explain what is your current role at Google and also share with us your background so our audience can know you better. Yes, great. So I am currently the managing director for travel at Google and have been working in the travel space at Google for a little over 15 years now. So um, got to experience many of our partnerships and uh, clearly the Google travel product as well. Uh, prior to that, I've been in the digital media technology space for about uh, a little over 25 years now. So it's clearly a luxury having you with us this uh, afternoon. So first question, uh, uh, Susie, uh, Google has new products that will make it easier than ever before for the, the travel partners, both large and small, to capture new travel demand, including hotel rates on Google Business Profile, fit lists on board and for hotel ads, and performance max for hot travel goals. Could you elaborate more about each of each one of them? Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, starting with the first one, kind of the the rates on business profiles. So, as we look at 2023 and beyond, um, it's critical that users can find the information that they're looking for, and that travels have travel companies have an easy way to connect with consumers. So recently, uh, we provided a new option to add hotel rates directly via business profiles. So with full access to a wider range of hotel prices, you know, users have a more comprehensive set of options um, to research their trip and ultimately book with those partners. So for all hotels, or for all travel companies and hoteliers, um, the, tr the change really broadens their reach uh, to reach those potential customers. Um, you know, as you, as you asked, there was a couple other things in the question in terms of the feedless, feedless onboarding for hotel ads. So we've significantly simplified uh, the onboarding process and offering for it, the ability for hoteliers to add their listings to hotel ads um, via the Google business um, or the feedless onboarding. So individual hotels that meet uh, the eligibility requirements can directly input their rates through their Google business profile to participate um, in the, the free hotel booking link. So uh, we've opened up the hotel ads opportunity to quite a, a quite a broader array of hoteliers by adding this less complicated process. And then the last one that you mentioned, um, you know, talking about performance max, um, you know, I, uh, I performance max is something you're gonna hear a lot from Google about, and it is a way to, really automate the way for our partners to um, you know, run their marketing messages across YouTube, display, search, travel ads. It, there's a whole array of options to kind of automate this process. And Pmax is doing that in a very uh, you know, intelligent way and a way to help consumers really capture that demand. Um, so we're really excited about Pmax and the, and the path forward. So uh, we can say that the 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 effort uh, that Google has uh, always fostered to democratize through technology uh, is uh, clearly present in, in all these actions. No, it's making simpler to the travel companies to improve the performance, the quality of their uh, campaigns or the actions. So it's much easier for them to show uh, their products. Uh, regardless the size of the company, uh, regardless yeah. it's an OTA, it's a hotel, uh, no, that's that's what is be lying behind what you have explained. Yeah, I mean, I think as you think about all three of those options, right? There are ways to tap into technology to make it easier for partners and travel companies to, you know, capture that demand in an automated way. 
and we're making it simpler. We are leaning into the technology. So, you know, there's an array of options. All of those offer kind of a different component to how we're doing that, but they're all, you know, achieving that goal of making it simpler and again, automatically capturing uh, that aggressively returning travel demand that we've seen in 2022 and into 2023. Fortunately, <laughs> after these two terrible years we've been through. <laughs> so Susie, could you explain what means opening up access to free and paid booking links through easier onboarding for hoteliers? Sure. So when people search for hotels on Google, they see um, a list of options for rates and booking options. And it's important for hotels to be able to share their rates to get the direct bookings and be present for travelers and, um, and gather this important information as consumers are researching their op options. So the free hotel booking links on Google, search and maps, makes it easier for hotels to, and travel sites to reach interested consumers around the world and at no additional cost. Um, this really helps our travel partners extend their reach and gives consumers a more comprehensive set of options because after clicking these links, they are taken directly to the partner's website where they have options to book. So by lowering the barrier to entry and making it free for hotel ads or for hoteliers and travel sites, um, you know, on search and maps, we, we really, uh, you know, provide that option to have a, a greater access to those consumers. And again, in the theme of capturing that recovering demands. So in addition to the free booking links, we do have, um, as, as you know, the hotel ads where you have the option to permit per, uh, promote a specific property. Mm -hmm. And when, user, when users are looking for lodging in general or looking for that specific property, we do provide that opportunity versus, via the hotel ads option. So there is the free booking links that are complementary to the hotel ads. Uh-huh, understood. Uh, could you explain what has implied to expand the performance max for travel goals you have explained before. So hotel advertisers are able to promote their properties and increase bookings across all of Google's channels. Yeah. So in you know, we we, we talked about PMAX in 2021, we launched PMAX. So last year we expanded performance max uh, for travel goals. And to, we did this to make it easier than ever for hoteliers and travel partners to capture that new travel demand. So performance max for travel goals, it really simplifies campaign setup with a pre-populated asset group for each hotel property. And with the auto-generated images, descriptions, videos um, that advertisers can review and edit, um, it, it then expands that advertiser's reach um, on a property-specific query, um, promoting across Google Google's advertising channels in a similar way that we talked about with the um, Performance Max, PMAX product. Um, this just expands it a bit further specific to um, travel partners. Uh -huh. my, ne my next question is focused on one of the things that I, I consider that is more valuable from Google uh, uh, in terms of the uh, uh cooperation with travel companies and in many cases i think it's not so much uh, appreciated or known i'm talking about travel insights uh, the which from my perspective is incredibly useful for destination uh, management entities and destination management companies so it is i i remember in my old days when we launched uh, from google with focus right uh, look inside the travel and uh, uh Travel Insight is absolutely amazing because it's giving an accurate and updated information. So I, I would really appreciate if you, Susie, could explain what is uh, Travel Insight, how could be used for travel entities to better uh, improve their decisions. Yeah, we have heard from travel partners across the board how valuable these insights are and how valuable travel insights are. This is something we're actually very proud of during the global pandemic. Um, these insights were helping partners recover, helping them understand. I mean, we saw some very different travel trends during that time, depending on you know where people were able to travel. There was different types of travel happening. So these insights were invaluable. And we heard from many partners how they utilize that as part of their recovery strategy. Um, so what we're referring to here is what we introduced in the insights portal for travel, um, for the travel and tourism sector. And that is a one-stop shop for the industry to understand 
and pivot to really meet those real-time demands. So there's really two free tools that we're talking about here. That is the Destination Insights tool, which is a one-stop shop to help travel businesses, governments, um, others understand and pivot to meet those real-time regulations, trends, and demand. The second tool that we've uh, launched is Destination, Destination Insights. So that really gives um, you know, that same audience uh, a clear picture of top sources of that demand per destination. So this can help potential tra uh, help users understand where potential travelers may be coming and adjust marketing campaigns accordingly. So again, you know these these insights tools are invaluable to our partners. They're free tools that you know those in the industry can access and really help you understand what is that behavior. What are those insights that can help you pivot in in you know in, in a real time way. Um, to capture that demand. So very proud of these tools. Hopefully uh, those listening can check it out and uh, play around with some of those free insights. And I think it's, uh, as I said before, it's one more example of the democratization of the information because uh, some people say, no, Google only shared uh, relevant information inside with large travel companies, large advertisers. That's not true. This information is completely available to all the travel uh, uh, companies, travel, the travel entities. So they, they, they only just need to uh, uh, dedicate the right resources to understand all this information. And, yeah. uh, and, and especially in these new times that we are living post pandemic, in which uh, not all the habits are the same, I think it's especially relevant to try to focus more and more in what is happening every quarter because we are re rewriting how we are now defining the, the, the travel industry. Uh, last question, last but not least, uh, because if I'm not wrong, Susie, you are also responsible for the site google.com slash travel. So it's uh, at the end of the day, you uh, are the one who uh, I coordinate squads is the content that we you find there. So we would like to understand uh, how we as travelers can consider this tool, this site, google.com is less travel, uh, what we can do there, what we can find, how we should use it. Yeah. Um yeah, well, uh, you know, while while I love the product, I'd love to take credit. I, I'm not responsible for everything that happens there. I partner very closely with our product and engineering team that is continually evolving and uh, and building a, a best in class product. Um, you know, really, the the goal there is travel planning can be complicated, and every day users come to Google looking to research, book, you know, inspire all those stages of the traveling the travel process. You know, and we are looking to make that easier, to simplify for consumers, um, and really bring all those tools into one experience for them, and also a place where our partners can, as we've just talked about, in many ways, you know, capture those consumers and capture that travel demand. So, um, you know, with the functionality, uh, things like flights, things to do. You know, we talked about the hotel experience. You know, they can really experience, and then also. Um, inspire. So whether you're researching or booking that travel, um, you know, there's options to have access to those travel providers and or, you know, do the research. And so we're, you know, we're really proud of and excited about the future of the product in partnership with many of great travel providers out there. Um, you know, that researching a trip all in one place and simplifying, I think is really critical to what consumers are looking for especially as um, you know as, as folks return to travel and are kind of thinking about things in new ways and so we are uh, continually trying to provide them access to that information as I said in a in a very simplified way so we, we could say that uh, with this new approach Google uh, if we consider the travel cycle is not just only focus on search and booking but also is helping uh the the customer the traveler in the previous inspiration phase 
Exactly. So you think about something like things to do, right? Like when you're in London, what are those attractions and things that someone may be looking to do while they're on their trip? So not only can they look at how to get there, where to stay, but they can also start to experience what they might do um, while they're taking that trip. And there is a very close relationship between this Google.com and Source Travel and Google Maps, which at the end of the day is, let's say, a super app, which uh, is incredibly related to the traveler habits. Exactly. Yeah, the maps experience is, um, you know, all part of it as well, because we know that that visual acts aspect and it being able to see where you're traveling and how far things are apart and all of that, where your hotel is. So the maps experience is very important to the whole uh, travel experience as well. You're so absolutely I, right. And I didn't mention that, but I think also very close related to Google Maps is the google local guide programs which after the years has become if i'm not wrong one of the largest repository of uh, reviews and uh, pictures of destination in the world we absolutely have reviews like i said visual experience is very important so you know being able to access that and and have it all available in you know easily accessible in one experience i think is the goal and and continuing to work to simplify that so you know we're, we're hard at work at every day to make that the best experience for travelers as possible you have mentioned things to do uh, the, the the path uh, in the travel space for, that google has followed uh, it's quite clear of so flights accommodation first hotels later uh, short-term rentals alternative accommodation and uh, and now things to do tourist activities can you talk a, this is the new one the newest one i think it's uh, is one of the the brightest stars of the google travel ecosystem can you elaborate a little bit more about what you are doing what you are planning to do with things to do what we can find as travel companies and as travelers yeah, I mean, things to do, we're trying to replicate some of our efforts in hotels to bring together that information, pricing and products from across the travel ecosystem. So I think, you know, it's it's still early stage and there's, uh, you know, experiments running in that product as we as we bring that into the travel ecosystem of Google Travel. Um, things to do ads with free listings can have an incredible incremental impact for partners and businesses. So I think as you look at our travel ecosystem and where we've seen success, we'll look to replicate that with things to do as well. Um, but yeah, excited about bringing that into the mix again to bring together that whole experience, you know, the the all the stages of the um, the travel process. So we know that this is one of the most difficult tests that uh, you're facing because of the fragmentation of the offer. So it's, uh, so if uh, accommodation was a tough uh, task, uh, I think that the tools and activities or things to do on a destination is even more complicated. But if someone has the resources and the determination to do it, clearly is uh, is Google. Uh, Susie, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, it's it's complicated to understand the whole uh, uh, ecosystem that Google has deployed during this year in the in the in the travel space. And it's uh, it's uh, it's really a pleasure to to have someone who is actually making this happen, uh, sharing with us uh, all this relevant information. So I just uh, I just want to say thanks again, and I hope we have the opportunity to keep on talking in the future with all the new things. And I'm sure that you will be you will have the opportunity to share with us in the forthcoming months. Yes, it's it's great to see you. I think, you know, there's a there's a common theme that we hit in all of these topics and that is, you know, thinking about the power of Google AI to expand reach and capture demand, um inspire, optimize and um, you know, ultimately drive loyalty as well. So, we're thinking about all of those things. We're thinking about it under the umbrella of Google AI and um it's great to see you and I I hope to see you again soon. Travel Think is a non-profit initiative launched and managed by Dr. Javier Gonzalez Soria in 2006, focused on new trends, innovation, and startups in the travel tech space. 
Thousands of professionals received the Travel Thinking News, where travel top leaders and entrepreneurs shared their insights and reflections.